Welcome to From the Shed M podcast, episode 50. Myself, T Dot, Theo, how you doing? Good, good. Looking forward to the weekend. It's Friday. I mean, I say I'm looking forward to the weekend, but if Chelsea ruin it like last weekend, then it's going to be a miserable one. But at least we're, I can enjoy my Saturday knowing that we play on Sunday afternoon. Yeah. As, you know what I was just thinking as well? I think our FA Cup's early kickoff is half 12. So, yeah, I'm hoping that we win. I mean, we should beat Plymouth. It's a week away, but stranger things have happened but yeah if we can't beat Plymouth we should even board the plane to Abu Dhabi I think yeah I think this is send the kids send the under <laughs> but, um, talk, talk to me before we get on to the, the episode that we want to try and do today just talk to me about the, the transfer news around um, Dembele who potentially might be coming to the club someone that for the price uh, I'm hearing 20 million for someone who's potentially got a 100 million price tag Yes, he's an injury-prone player at Barcelona, but what's your thoughts on him? Just initial thoughts. Personally, I'm not a fan. I think a lot of people that I'm seeing on Twitter, Instagram talking about him are talking about the Dembele that they used to watch at Borussia Dortmund. But we have to remember that he's been at Barcelona now for four or five years and he's underperformed there. He's spent more time in the treatment room than on the pitch. I think he's not the type of player we should be adding to the squad already that we have a very play, you know, injury-plagued squad and discipline wise i don't think he's the best either a lot of you know stories of him turning up the training 30 minutes late 45 minutes late and getting fined heavily that's the last thing we need right now to add to the squad and the dynamic of the team uh i don't think it's a position that we need strengthening if i'm honest we've got so many you know talented wingers yes they're inconsistent with their performances at times but they're very very talented and also um i just i'm not a fan of personally of him i think he's kind of like young french players they have big egos they're um they're kind of you know they let you know their lifestyle off the pitch get to their head but that being said i did watch an interview of thomas tuchel recently and they asked him who was the best player you've ever watched train and it says you know thomas tuchel that's managed the likes of neymar and bappe uh, uh some some amazing Chelsea players havertz verna you can't know who but um but he picked um he picked uh, Usman Dembele out of the bunch. So there's got to be some kind of talented player in there. You know, maybe if Danny Tuchel can revive that player that was at D- British Dortmund that they signed from Rennes, then it could be a good move, especially if it's 20 million. It's not a lot of, mo- lot of money, but I don't think it's the right fit for us, if I'm honest. I think, I think if I was to look at the other side of the coin and say to you that he's a player that, Yes, has a very bad... I think he's turned out... I think Barcelona had to send their security team out to search for him at one point. But if you take away his Barcelona stint for a minute and just talk about when Tuchel was at Dortmund with him and how he got the best out of him, I think he kept him relatively injury-free. Let's say he had the odd injury, but it wasn't to the, you know, the sort of magnitude that he's had at Barca. For 20 million, I think I'd gamble. And the reason I say this is because I think I'd have I'd have him in on a very short 18-month contract with the option to extend. And I think one of the things that we've always done in the past is we've signed players and we give them this, you know, three or four year deal and it hasn't worked out. You just look at the extensive list of, uh, you know, a Danny Drinkwater or you know, a Ross Barkley. We've brought those players in and it hasn't worked out for whatever reason or they've not been given the, the sufficient game time, um, albeit that they at times haven't been injured. I think Drinkwater was as soon as he signed. I don't think he I don't think he was fully fit when he we, we signed him. But in terms of Dembele, I think there's someone in there that, you know, can be unlocked by Thomas Tuchel. And even in his press conference this afternoon, he did say, you know, they've kept in regular touch uh, whenever Dembele's linked up with the, the national French team. Uh, whilst Tuchel was PSG manager, they've always had that connection. They've always met up as well somehow. They've always kept in contact. And I just think... Yes, we're over um, compliment. You know, we've got so many p- players in that certain position that he could come and fulfil. But is it just a, a risk that we take based on where we are? You know, um, mm. I, I look at the players that we've got there now. Look, I'm, I'm, it's a tough one because we don't need him. I know there's been mention of Aiden Hazard as well previously. Is he someone else that we could potentially take a risk on and, and invest that money into someone that we know can play in the Premier League? knows the club um has history with Chelsea is it someone we can invest in in him but I think why not why what 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 else could we do potentially now in terms of um taking a risk on him and it pays off we've got ourselves a, a very good player in in, in uh Osman Dembele 
in my opinion. But it is a massive risk, you know. Um, 20 million? 20 million is that massive though? I don't know. Uh, it's a massive risk if it fails. I think 20, 20 millions are still, a, for me, is a lot of money. And I know it's not in, in Chelsea's terms, it's not. But I think if mm. we if we have someone, and I'm only talking if we sign him for 18 months, if we give him like a three-year deal yeah. and he's turning up to training and he's on the treatment table more than he's on the pitch, then that 20 million is is basically, you may as well throw it down the toilet because no one's going to pay 20 million for him in three years. So I think that way it's a massive risk. But I look at someone like Coutinho who, you know, was at Barcelona, was heavily injured. Um, he put that down to a lot of the, the training regime over in Barca, went to Bayern, kind of re revived his career slightly. Um, yes, he's only played one game for Aston Villa, but just looking at the way he started that game, he looked like a different player, like a new player. He looked happy again to be playing football. So, and that's the other side of the coin that I was I was thinking this morning. Do we just take the risk with him? I don't know. I'm still quite opposed to this. We're basing all these facts on the Dembele we used to watch at Dortmund, like I said, four or five years ago. Mm. And, we, you know, the, the matter of the fact is he's been at Barcelona now and he's he's flopped in a way he hasn't looked good um i think tuchel should be focusing more on like the, the, the wing back department if we are to go into the transfer market mm. uh but like i always say i, I back tuchel to make the right acquisitions and which we were talking about on whatsapp you know he's only since he's around the club the only players that have come in are lukaku bettinelli and saul and we're starting to think now that all three of those players didn't tuchel didn't really have much of a say in them i doubt tuchel even knew who bettinelli was you know, Sal Neguez maybe was a bit of an emergency, you know, purchased a sign or loan to, you know, solve the Billy Gil Gilmore kind of void that was left. And Lukaku, now that you're starting to look at how, you know, he's fitted into the system, you're starting to think maybe he wasn't a Tuchel player, maybe Tuchel wanted mm -hmm. more someone like a Haaland or maybe even a Lewandowski, who knows. But, um, but yeah, if Tuchel actually goes to the board and says, give me 20 million, I want Dembele, then something does indicate that this is a player that could fit into his system and that Tuchel can trust to to fill in the part, fill in the you know the, the the void or you know whatever kind of problem we're currently having in creativity or you know attacking players. Hmm. Yeah, it's, it's it's a it's a good uh, aspects of looking at it. You know, I think it's it's a it's a good point because I think you no, know, we know Tuchel to an extent. I think wanted Hakimi. He was definitely on Tuchel's list. Obviously, know that Harland was definitely on that list. It was probably the top top of the the shopping list. Um, so I agree with you. You know, I think Sal was definitely a, a, a sort of last minute, you know, Amazon Prime sort of thing where you need it next day, next day delivery. And you look at Lukaku, when you think about it now, they've probably said, look, we're not, we're not going to be able to get you Haaland this year, but we can get you Lukaku. Let's get the deal done. And you, you can tell, I remember there was a, a moment um, when Lukaku returned from his injury and he kept saying, I think he came out somehow. I don't know if it was leaked by Lukaku, whoever, but he said he was fit enough to play. I think Thomas Tuchel confirmed it. He said, you know, Lukaku is asking to play, but he's, you know, in my opinion, he's not fully fit to, to start matches. And it just made me realise there was something, friction, you know, a bit of tension there between him and him and Lukaku at that point. But, you know, uh, don't want to spend the, the 50th episode, which is what <laughs> this is, talking about Lukaku, which I seem to be doing quite a lot of. So let, let's talk about the season so far. As, as Chelsea fans, obviously, our, our expectations from the back of the Champions League, winning that, beating Man City, Porto, um, a brilliant night. And then going into that sort of new season, Lukaku does come. I know I didn't say I was going to mention his name, but Lukaku comes into the team. I think my expectations were to win the Premier League, if I'm honest. I think we at that point, you know, we've got a fully fit Reese James, Ben Chilwell. We've got the depth in the squad, Kante, uh, Jorginho, Kovacic. Werner, Havertz, Lukaku, Premier League was the ultimate goal, in my opinion. But what was your thoughts going into the season off the back of the Champions League? I mean, you just have to go back to our I don't know, 28th or 30th episode. I can't remember which one it was. And we were so we had such high expectations as Chelsea fans. Like you said, we, ju we just won the Champions League in, in May. We bought what we thought was the kind of last piece of the jigsaw puzzle in Lukaku to, you know, solve the goal problem, which we have to remember, Jorginho was the highest goal scorer in the Premier League and we didn't want to replicate that this season. So we felt Lukaku would be solving that. We're still not a bit unsure about that one. And um, and then we started the season so well. Mm. You know, you look at August, September, even maybe towards end of October, we were, you know, we were top of the league. We were winning games comfortably, even thinking back, you know, when we won away to, to Arsenal, away to Tottenham. 
these were wins that were indicating that you know everything's correct. We were keeping clean sheets, so defensively we looked really, really, you know, really uh, a team that was you know well put together. So our expectations were high, and then I think since December onwards, it's all kind of collapsed there. But we were fully entitled to have high expectations. You know, we'd won the Champions League, which is a knockout football. We know that knockout football is very different to a, a 38 game season, you know, a league season. So, um, so yeah, our expectations were very high. Like yourself, I expected us to win the league or at least challenge until the very end, which now seems very unlikely. And I know because mathematically it's still correct, which I was saying a few episodes ago, but that's gone in the bin now, I think. Mm. Um, but yeah, we were entitled to have high expectations. Because we started, I mean, we started the season relatively well. You know, you look at even going back to that sort of pre-season um, because we didn't, we didn't lose a game, did we? We beat Bournemouth, we beat Arsenal, and then we we drew with Spurs. Um, obviously, we go into the Super Cup, we win the Super Cup as well. We forgot to mention that. But mm. even even going into those games, you, you look at the Crystal Palace, you know, the 3-0, 2-0 against Arsenal, that's controversial game at Anfield, 1-1. We went on a really good run up until, I'm just trying to find it, up until the Man City game where, you know, we were pegged in pretty much most of that game. We couldn't get out of our own half. And I think at that point for me was when I realised the honeymoon period of the Champions League was over, I think. I think then I've, I've realised the real work starts mm. at that point, I think, because it was a it was such a, a shifting... I think we played... Juventus. I think just a couple after, of days later. Yeah, it was two, yeah, def- so two defeats in a row. Two, n- two one-nil defeats in a row. And yeah, you, you felt that was just a blip though. I felt that was just a blip because we beat Southampton straight yes, afterwards won, and then yeah. we went on another winning run. Mm. But but yeah, that end of September period was maybe the, the alarm bells could have been ringing that something was correct. I'm sure I said that. You did say something. I said yeah. that it's not clicking. I said we're winning, but it's not clicking. And I, it was probably around that time because I you could just see something wasn't right and... I couldn't put my finger on it. And now obviously it's evident that there's obviously injuries have played a massive factor, but even with, you know, even if Reese James and Chilwell was still in that team, yes, I'm, we'd probably have more points on the table, but I still think we'd have had a few losses and a few draws amongst, amongst those results. But yeah, talk, talk to me about so far your, your favorite game of the season so far. Um, I've got one in mind when you sent the list through earlier, today I, I've, I've thought of one straight away just there's well there's two i'm going to give one an honorable shout out but there's definitely one where i thought yeah this means a lot to me and this is going to be a big part of our season regardless of whether you know we finish top four or win the premier league i've got i've got three one okay. really stands out being the four nil win over juventus yeah yeah i think the fact that three cobham academy boys got on a score sheet against juventus a team that i grew up you know watching dominating italian football Mm. was special and you had that game as well at Stamford Bridge the yeah. atmosphere you know every time one of the it boys it was different yeah mm. and um you know Chiloba then it was Hudson Adoy then it was um Reese James then on Vina got the fourth which was nice as well and it just felt like everything was clicking that day and not just the, the score but the actual performance we dominated them and you know the, I think it was the it was the Hudson Adoy goal you know the loftus cheek build up and the passing yeah. it was yeah. just like it was champagne football i think that's what joe cole described it as so that was a really nice game and it's a comfortable win as well we were a one nil up at half time and then three nil up very quickly soon after the second half but another one that just really showed the resilience of the squad for me was the one one draw at anfield not okay. it wasn't it wasn't an enjoyable game i'm mm. sorry it wasn't an enjoyable game because anthony taylor was the ref we know what happens when anthony taylor referees us <laughs> your best friend my best friend, Lord, <laughs> Lord Voldemort, Lord Voldemort. <laughs> but just when the full-time whistle blew, as a Chelsea fan, you were just proud of how well we defended. Yeah, yeah. Mendy put in some great saves, Silva put in some immense blocks. And, you know, it felt when you celebrate a draw, like it feels like a win, you know you defended well. And, um, yeah, I just felt like if we can snatch a draw at Anfield with 10 men, playing 45 minutes with 10 men, mm. then we can go a long way this season. That's how it felt at the time. Uh, obviously, the, the two North London um, derby, uh, the North London wins. So I think were away ones were quite impressive as well, which I think maybe a cu- couple of yours or no, 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 no. I, okay, I, I had Juventus. That was going to be my honourable okay. shout out because um, I again, you know, I thought that was a game where I expected a lot more from Juventus. I think because we played them the what they beat us one nil um, 
in the away fixture. And I, I kind of expected a bit more. You know, I looked at mm. their team sheet and I thought, oh, okay, this is going to be a bit of a tough game. But the way we played, it was almost like we were playing, you know, Notts County. Yeah. It was, like, it was just a weird, and that's no disrespect to Notts County, but just because <laughs> of the, the colours of the kit. But just in terms of the way that we played that game, it was almost like, they put out their reserves or it was a very strong Juventus team and to to do that and again you know the crowd was obviously a massive factor in my opinion because it was just it was a different atmosphere obviously you know more about that you know you're, you're there more than I am but it was just a different it felt different being there so that was probably my honourable shout out but I'm going to be honest my, my, my big game so far this season was Liverpool at Stamford Bridge the 2-2 because after 2-0 you know, even this season, now you look at the way we're playing now, we would have collapsed off. It could have been five or six, to be fair. And to bring it back to 2-2 two, two, and to still potentially go on to to almost, you know, not just be satisfied with a 2-2, two, two, to try and go on and still win the game for me was, and the goal, I mean, the goal, you know, Kovacic's goal was, is, not was, is probably arguably one of the goals of the season for me, you know, it's, the, the, the way that he he was able to to do that backpedaling as well mm. it for me that's and and Liverpool I mean come on it's, yeah. it's Liverpool as well so to 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 you said then about the one one celebrating it like it was a win that's how I felt after the two two yeah. you know, it was like a win as much as it didn't feel like it because we were two 0 down but to f- show that fight and the the, the um, togetherness of the the team can't can't fault them you know mm. that was something that I, I can take away from that and think yeah you know we didn't lose we ought to lose we should have lost because we didn't start the game well um true true and we were at the game together i remember yeah, yeah. we had a pint at half time and we we're going into that second half thinking we're going to win this now yeah, yeah. that's how yeah. you know the energy around the stadium and the momentum yeah. the fans had it was a special game and i think the quality of the goals was the kind of icing on the cake yeah definitely definitely um the lot. I mean, we've lost. We lost obviously Ben Chilwell, Reese James. We've lost a lot of players due to COVID uh, injuries as well. You look at Kante, Kovacic. Um, I'm pretty sure almost every player has either had COVID or has a, has had an injury this season. I'm trying to think of someone who hasn't, but I think everyone's had an injury or potentially had COVID this season. I was about to say Mendy, but he's even missed a couple of games for injury. And yeah, yeah. Now he's at the AFCON. Yeah, you're yeah, right. So I think we've had, we've lost some element of that squad at some point. At what point did you kind of think, not that this, the, the, the league is out of reach, because I don't think we've only, we've only sort of established that the last two or three games, but when did you kind of think, yeah, something isn't right with this team. Or have you ever thought that? Did you are, are you sort of agreeing with me, or do you still think that things are right? It's just maybe we need to give certain players time to to um, adjust to a system that Tuchel's trying to get them to play. If I'm completely honest, even when we were underperforming in December, getting draws against the likes of Everton or whoever it was, Wolves, I still felt you know, that this is December. This is what Chelsea do in December. We drop points. It's normal. We've got a congested fi- fixture list. We've got Ben Chilwell and Reese James out. I was almost trying to come up with excuses. So I did. I don't really think I felt like this title race was over in December. I still felt we were in it to win. And then I think, if I'm completely honest, when I really thought something's wrong, we don't look ourselves. This season could be, you know, could be scrapping for top four now. Was our last game against Brighton? Because mm. the moment I started to watch that game, we were one 0 up. I just thought, you know, this is going to be a one-one draw. You said we, it. We, we both said it online. Yeah, we both said it on yeah, WhatsApp. Yeah. And and for me to actually, as a fan, to actually think that almost before you know they even scored is worrying. You know, mm. it indicates that there are some defensive problems. There is a that togetherness of the team that we had maybe against the likes of Liverpool or, or the Juventus game. So that's what worried me a bit. And we kind of came up with a list of reasons why it could be, you know, tiredness. We're, we're the only team that's played a, a game midweek weekend for, since the 1st of December. I think we're averaging a game every 3.8 days, which is yep. the, you know, we're the only team that's had that in the league, which is ridiculous, ridiculous. But I, again, I don't want to go into the big rant. Go for um, it. <laughs> no, I, 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 we should, we'll have a separate episode talking about how the league is run and how it's losing its integrity. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. just le- read, read Gary Neville's tweets. He's spot on about it. 100%. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think it's kind of a, that Brighton game for me was just uh, when I realised this is how we are now. We're not the same team. We're, we're tired. We don't have that depth anymore. So yeah, for me, that was the one. I, I think for me, it was slightly, I mean, you've sort of 
mentioned it just then, but I think that Watford game for me, even though mm. we won, and it was a it was a strange one for me because I felt like we because we won. I think we won two one, but it didn't. No, you know, didn't paper, feel like a win. No, on paper it's two one. You know, you say, oh yeah, we won, but watching that game. You know, we could have lost. We could have lost heavily as well when you think about the game. So I think that's when I thought, right, this is serious business now. Because if you look at that, we went on to, to lose to West Ham 3-2. We drew with Zenit. We sort of, I think even the Leeds game was a bit a bit iffy. I think that was a bit of a dodgy game as well. Everton was 1-1. Wolves, we beat um, Brentford in the Carabao Cup convincingly beat Aston Villa. I think that was the, the time when I thought, okay, we might... Get our season back on track. Yeah, I think that was the game where I thought, yeah, okay, we might do something now because we beat Villa. I think we looked at the fixtures after that. You know, you take away um, the Liverpool game. But then after that, you look and you think, yeah, we can we can get something out of these games in January now because, you know, they're, they're relatively easy. Okay, Man City's difficult, but the cup games, I was never really concerned about and I'm not concerned about Sunday. Um but just those games there, I thought we can get the Liverpool game out of the way and we play well. We can go on a bit of a run, but I don't know. I mean, we haven't we haven't lost since then. I don't think we, apart from the Man City game, but it just doesn't feel that togetherness is, like you said, isn't there. That belief you can tell isn't there with the players. And that's, I think, what has cost us this season. The fact mm. that we've gone into certain games and whatever's going on behind the scenes has definitely been put out on the pitch. And I think mm. that's where things have gone wrong for us. But, Talk to me about your um, favourite goal so far of the season because I think I've already mentioned mine. It, it is the Matteo Kovacic yeah. goal. But... Uh, yeah, I think we, I, I've mentioned mine as well. I think um, I, I, I want to say the Kovacic goal, but um, I think that would be, like you said, our goal of the season. But I want to be a bit different and say another one. I'll say the Hudson Odoi goal against um, Juventus. Against Juventus, just for the yeah. build up play. I think it was a Rudiger pass that started it off. I can't remember, but um, it was just silky football and we're almost dribbling around them in the penalty box, which is something ridiculous. Doesn't um, happen anymore. Doesn't happen anymore, no. <laughs> um, I think it was lots of cheek played a part. Hudson Adoy played a part. Reese James played a part. It was just yeah, so nice to the see Cobham. the Cobham boys, La Cobham, yeah. as they say. Yeah, yeah. Um, but the, the Kovacic one, the technique, the fact he's backtracking and just the atmosphere in Sanford Bridge when it went in. Yeah, there was a VAR check, which was ridiculous, which kind of, you know, that killed the atmosphere a little. Mm. But then the belief of the players straight after that goal, for me, it was almost like we were still, the players were not just not celebrating the goal. They were kind of already celebrating the next one because they were thinking ahead that we're going to score again. And then it came yeah, with the Pulisic yeah. goal. So for me, those two are the standout ones. Yeah, I'd have to, I mean, I, 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 like, I like that goal because I think it was, I think, you know, freeing it up. And if I remember correctly, it was almost very near the end of the game as well. Um, you know, we didn't have to score fourth, is what I'm saying. We mm. didn't have to go on and score the fourth goal. And I think it just shows that we weren't willing to stop at three. We weren't willing to stop at two. We wanted more goals. And yeah, it was, a, I mean, that was a brilliant goal. Um, yeah, the reason I think I, I chose Kovacic is just because of, just because of, like I said before, I mean, that is one of the, that is a very difficult goal to score. I think mm. people see it on, you know, TV or, you know, even now if they watch it on YouTube or whatever, and it just looks like a normal goal, but to, to have that technique to do that, um, congested box as well. If you remember, I think the Liverpool players were trying to clear, clear out the defence and to do that, I just, yeah, it was just a goal. That, yeah. I, I remember think, I, I nudged you and I said SCN <laughs> versus Barcelona. I said SCN versus Barcelona. <laughs> I think I was too busy trying to make someone at the time. But yeah, yeah, it was um yeah, for me those two goals definitely stand out. I think you, you look at them and you, you can see that that was that was the fight in Chelsea. And we, when we see moments like that, it, it shows us that we, we can go on to win. You know, we've done it before. We can win Premier Leagues. We can win difficult games. We can come back from a 2-0 de uh, def deficit and, and try and get a win. So it shows me there's fight in certain players, but it, it's obviously disappointing when you look at some of the results that we've had in between those games as well, that, True. you know, had we won or we played a bit better or, you know, we'd been able to take our chances, we could be still talking about a title challenge, which is, the frustrating thing about this season, I think. Definitely. Three wins out of 11 Premier League in our last 11 Premier League games isn't good enough. You can't win the Premier League if you only get nine free wins from your 11 Premier League fixtures in through, between December and January. It's not good enough. But um, goals, I was honourable shout out to Mason Mount versus West Ham. 
Yeah, I know we, oh. I know, yeah, I know we yeah, lost that game, yeah, so we, yeah. we forget about it a little. But um, I did say that to you. I said we'll we'll forget about that goal. Yeah, I think it was good. Loftus cheek to Ziyech. Ziyech pings it to like to Mason volley Mount. Volley then, you know, Fabianski yeah. could do nothing about it. Yeah, I forgot uh, about that. That's a that's yeah. in fact that would probably beat my um my Callum goal. Yeah, yeah. I think that those three. I mean, Kovacic number one, but between the other two, could easily mm. be second or third. That's they were both great goals. I think that's one thing this season that, you know, we again, we're struggling. You know, we're not, we're not talking about a prolific number nine or someone who plays in that offensive uh, role. We're not talking. And that's, I think that is still the biggest concern for me as a Chelsea fan, you know, I, and I, I, know, I don't want to pinpoint this down to Lukaku because I think, and I've said this before on here, I think offensive players that we've got, you know, Kai Havertz, Timo Werner's, throw Hakim Ziyech in there as well. You know, I don't think we've ever had someone that, has been a threat in the goal since Diego Costa. And I, I go back and I think about the strikers that have come or the sort of attacking players that have come after him. None of them really strike me. And I think, you know, I think about Diego Costa and defenders must have been worried. He was a nightmare. See. He was yeah. a nightmare to play against. Defensively, he, I remember there was days where he'd be back in the, the, the back four, whatever he was playing at that time, back four, you know, playing defensive, mid-tackling people, getting the ball. He was everywhere. And I think we've, we've never really had that. And I think, again, I don't want to pinpoint on Lukaku because I think he is a massive problem at the moment for the club. And uh, But I think we could pinpoint that down to, you know, I think we need to look at and again another option we haven't really got someone like a Cesc Fabregas who was able to unlock defences and help the attackers as well and I think that's a massive massive factor do you do you think that's something that needs to be addressed in the summer that we haven't really replaced a Diego Costa a, you know I look at Pedro you know look how for me Pedro is one of the they, you know they said he was finished at Barca but he came and he'd done a job at Chelsea so do you think that's something that we've got to look at removing lifting all the Baba Ramans and Kennedys and drink waters, Barclays, get them out of the club, take a, even if it means taking a, a loss on what we paid for them, which is something we don't necessarily do as part of our business model. But do you think that's something we've got to do to in order to, to get that balance right in the club? We've got to do that, but it's just a question of who wants to get take drink water off our, you know, off our books, who wants to take Baba Raman. They, they don't want to buy them. They just want to loan them for a season. And eventually I think... It's going to be annoying for Chelsea, but we're just going to really get them off. You know, when their contracts expire, they'll leave on free as free agents. I don't think we'll get any money for any of them. Um, maybe Barkley, we will. Um, if Tuchel, I think, doesn't see him as a squad player next season. But yeah, I completely agree. We haven't replaced uh, Diego Costa. We haven't replaced the Cesc Fabregas. You know, that creativity in midfield is really lacking in the last couple of seasons. Mason Mount sometimes plays a part, but a lot of our goals have come from the wing backs, the likes of a Chilwell or Reese James. Every single one of our defenders has scored this season, bar Aspie, if I'm correct, which is a good, you know, our defenders are contributing to goals, but we'd much rather see the likes of Lukaku, Pulisic, uh, Werner, yeah. you know, getting those goals. And I do think one thing I would like to see the club more is sign maybe experienced players more. Mm. A lot of the experienced players we sign often go on to be brilliant signings. Thiago mm. Silva, Diego Costa, Cesc Fabregas, Pedro, mm. like you just mentioned. Whereas now we try to go for more kind of one a player that's proven himself for one season, two seasons. and the Up and coming. Up and coming. And we play mm. ridiculous prices for these Bundesliga Serie A Dutch players. I don't know from where. And I just would like to see us maybe just as a statement almost. It kind of sounds crazy to say, but go for a Modric, go for a Cruz, go for a player like that. Mm. Maybe not those ones because they're, you know, 35, 36. Like but Coutinho, go, Coutinho was going for, for cheap. Could have been so. an option, but yeah. given his Barca form, maybe that would have been the best one. But then again, Fabregas, I think his last season at Barca wasn't his best. And we still, you know, we still went there. And mm. But to go for a player that maybe will make fans question whether we're signing him like we did with Silva. People think, thought he was finished, but he proved the... Mm probably every single one of those fans wrong. So I think that's the business I would like to, to see us do, you know, sign smart, you know, s smart players that are experienced as well, mm. rather than these kind of up and coming ones that may need six months to adjust to the league beforehand. Because then, I mean, we, we, we say, and I agree with you, you know, we say um, they need six months or they need a bit of time. And in this day and age, you, you just haven't got that luxury. You know, if you lose the top of the league and, you know, City go nine or 12 points here, the league's finished. It's, it's pretty much done. So I think you're right. I think 
maybe gamble on a, a Lewandowski. I know he wouldn't come at this point, but someone like that who we know is proven, yeah. he's he doesn't need to adjust. He can play in different style um, systems, and he's able to adapt. And I think perfect I think, example, perfect yeah, example yeah, actually. Yeah. yeah, and I think the board need to back Tuchel. I think the thing that's worrying me at the moment is, I mean, we've got to remember Tuchel's only been technically at the club for a year, albeit he's been the best part of two seasons. He's, he's been at the club. I think this week has probably been... Um, It'll be his one-year anniversary. One-year anniversary. Yeah. I think it's just gone or might be coming. In the coming out. days, in the coming days, I think. Yeah. So he's only been at the club for... And he hasn't really put his stamp or he hasn't been able to stamp his authority in terms of who he wants to bring into the club. Adjusting, getting rid, getting rid of all these players that we've just mentioned, bringing in someone with a bit of experience. He hasn't had the opportunity to do that. So I think... If I had to sum up his 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 um, appointment that he's, he's had over the twelve months, you can't fault it. You can't fault what he's done. He's he's won the champion. He's, he got us top four, which was unrealistic. We have to give, we have to say that at the time it wasn't guaranteed when Lampard was there that we were going to get top four. We have to give Lampard on the flip side of that credit because he got us to a certain um, part of the Champions League before he got sacked so we have to give him that part of the credit but to get us to the final that was too cool to win the Champions League that was too cool to come back in after the back of that season and win the, the, the Super Cup that's too cool to get us to the League Cup final that's too cool there's things that he's done and I think you know again we always talk about it on here but we talk about social media and things like that and twit, you know, football Twitter uh, you know, there's people on there talking about getting him sacked and things. And I just think, I just think, how can you get a manager sacked who one hasn't had the, he hasn't had a full season at the club. You know, we're talking about Tuchel being sacked after 12 months in, you know, back end of one season, the start of one season. You know, we're, we're third in the league, which, okay, our objectives was to win the Premier League. So we, we're kind of not meeting that at the moment, but we've got a club World Cup to play for. We're in the League Cup final against Liverpool, who I think we can beat. <laughs> I think they called it the South of Anfield or something last oh, night. I didn't. I didn't pick I up. I saw on it. We, we've been to Wembley like seventeen times, and they'd only like been there like seven. Yeah, yeah. And like, Wembley is ours. You know, it's not. It, it's not theirs. It didn't make sense, but I think didn't. we can, be, I can. I think we can beat them at Wembley. I think we can beat them at Anfield or Stamford Bridge. Um, I'm, I can't remember if I mentioned the Club World Cup, but we're in the Club yeah. World Cup. We've, we're we're still in the FA Cup as well. We've got a, a relatively nice fixture against Plymouth. Champions League against Lille. Champions League as well. I wasn't going to mention it because I realistically I don't know how realistically we are in in winning that again. But if no. we're in it, we're in a chance to win, so we have to look at it that way. But realistically, we we weren't we weren't thinking we could win it last season. Yeah, yeah. And I said that you know I said that no one thought we were going to beat Atletico. No one said we were mm. going to beat Real Madrid. So no one said we were going to beat City in the final. Yeah, but, I mean, Tuchel was a brilliant knockout knockout manager in terms of yeah, winning yeah, football yeah. maybe less yeah. so in the league that's why i'm starting to wonder but when it comes to knockout football he knows you know the system to play he knows how to approach the game in the second leg mm. i don't expect us to win the champions league this season but i expect us to you know play some some football that will make us think maybe we can go to the semis type you know yeah yeah i i agree i agree i think he's he's got to be given the time as well but talk, talk to me about your 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 player so far that has and I don't mean best player in terms of how many goals or how. For me personally, I've got two, and my, the player so far that's impressed me overall over the season. Um, one would be Trevor Chalabar, who I thought was, you know, was never really even mentioned. You know, we brought in um, obviously Milan so I was playing a bit more football, but no one really mentioned Chalabar at the start of the season. So I think for me, he's. He's still got a lot to learn. I think, you know, you look at the Liverpool game at Stamford Bridge. I've, I don't think he was fully fit, but some of the mistakes that he's making um, are expected. You know, he's still young. He's still got a lot to learn as as a um, as a defender. But I think for me as well, I, I'm, I mean, I'm impressed with Mason Mount. I'm always impressed with him. I think he's, you look at when um, he was breaking into the first team, he looks like, I mean, he was, he was sort of feeble. He was sort of skinny. He didn't look like he was able to hold he just looks like a, a man now he looks like a, a complete player in the Premier League he's, he's obviously been in the gym he's doing what he needs to do to 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 make his game better but my second one would be Mendy as well I think for me and Kepa in fact I'm going to give three I'm going to give my two goalkeepers Kepa who I've been impressed with when he's played he's never really put a foot wrong I think there was probably the Everton game I'm going to say Carabao, uh FA Cup or Carabao Cup Carabao Cup I think it was um 
I think he put a foot wrong in that game. Against yeah, Southampton, like, maybe it was it. Maybe, maybe it was Southampton. I can't remember yeah. the game. But then he but, saved the penalty and redeemed himself in the shootout. So yeah, there we go. So that would be my three. I think definitely Trevor Chalabar because no one really gave him. Um, I mean, I could pick Reese James, you know, because based before his injury, his form was brilliant. But no one really thought about Trevor Chalabar and to see him come through the ranks and put himself in that team. He doesn't look out of place, in my opinion, but. Who, who, who's your guys that you, you've been impressed with or your player that you've been impressed with um, so far this season? I can only echo what you said about Chalaba, the two goalkeepers and Reese James, but you haven't mentioned my standout performer. I mean, the player for me that's kind of been the most consistent throughout the season. You look at maybe his average ratings out of 10 for each game and he's maintained maybe a high eight for me and that's Thiago Silva. Every, play, every game he's played, he's probably the one that... You, you don't kind of point the finger out and said, you know, these mistakes are due to him. Mm. He, he dropped the five out of 10. He hasn't performed for me. He's the main player that looks like he wants to play. You know, game against Brighton, a couple of those players didn't look like they were up for playing for Chelsea. Mm. Whereas Silver for me until the end, he was fighting probably the most annoyed player going back on the team bus. And he's played a lot of football as well. When you look at, mm. I could maybe say Reese James as well, but he's been injured now for a month or two. So it's kind of puts a spanner in the works with his, you know, his, maintaining that those performances but mm. silver for me has been outstanding contributed with goals as well spurs away mm. west ham away it's a good shout it's a good shout i, I can't can't knock you for it at all mm. he's, he's definitely um earned his, his contract as well you know he's got his mm. extension from it as well but it's, is it worrying that we've all the players we've mentioned are either goalkeepers <laughs> or defenders but this is this is goes back to the point of you know um and i mentioned it um on here before around the you know, Pulisic, Lukaku, Havertz, they just haven't been good enough. And that could just be down to the fact that none of these players are, are two course players. Mm. None of them. Not one of them. Not not to say that he shouldn't be able to get a tune out of him because he should. But Yeah, it's true. Oh. I saw an interesting tweet with Ziach. He was mm. a Lampard signing to yeah. play in a four three three formation. Yeah. So now that he's not really can adapt to two course formation in playing mm. behind a, a sole striker or doesn't really work like that. Mm. And and that's I think that's the problem that we've had with our turnaround of managers. They leave all the baggage behind with the, with the club. You know, all these players that we've got because we've had that many turnover of managers over the years who've potentially probably wanted to bring in these players or some of them, the board have just said, look, let's get this player in to cover over this crack for now and we'll get you a player in the summer. The manager's gone before the summer, the, the, the next window. So then they're there, they've got a four-year deal and then the manager wants to bring someone else in, the new one, the new manager wants to bring someone else in, gets gets a, a Kai Havertz or, um, well, I think Lampard wanted Declan Rice, didn't he? And um, Chilwell and they went, they went and got Kai Havertz and Timo Werner. So, yeah. you know, you look at things like that and I, I'm not I'm not blaming the players all, all, all together. I think the manager's got to be able to get something out of them. True, yeah. It's got to be a balance. And I, I think for me, we need to back Tuchel. When I say we, I mean the board, not me, not my money. But um, I, think, I think, you know, they've got to back him. They've got to give him what he wants and trust in him. You know, they, he wanted a key mean. We didn't go for him. Um, you know, imagine we had Akimi and Reese James. But it should work the other way around as well. The players, they're professionals, they're good mm. footballers. They should be able to adapt to any manager's system, formation, prove yeah. to them in training that they're worthy of playing in that, that position. Mm. I, I don't know. It's, I agree. It's, it's I kind agree. of 50-50 in a way. The manager mm. should get the best out of these players, just how like the players should adapt to the manager's system. But I think what we, from the players we kind of gave as our honourable mentions, mm. It goes to show that the defenders are the ones who adapted the most to the two cause system over the attacking options. Yeah, yeah. No, I agree. I agree hundred percent. I think you know, you're getting paid X amount or you're you're worth X amount or you're dubbed, you know, a, a world class player. With the title world class comes adaptation and you should be able to adapt to different, you know, scenarios in a game. And you've got to remember, you know, Tuchel should be, have the luxury of being able to switch from a five at the back to four at the back or, you know, two up top. And you, as a player, you should be able to adapt with that. You should be able to be able to play that system as well. So I agree with you. I just I just don't know if, from a manager's perspective, if if you walked into to Chelsea, but you wanted Haaland and you've got Lukaku, who just in your mind just doesn't fit what you're trying to do. How do you get the best out of something that you, you're not, but then again, Lukaku was a brilliant striker at Inter. 
it's kind of he had, he had he had uh, Mar- martinez next to him ah, but still like that goes back to what i said before as a player you should be able to adapt to playing without a martinez to to with a martinez you know it doesn't it's just these players i think they they like to complain about everything they go on a goal drought they'll they'll, they'll criticize the manager saying I, I can't play under his system if um you know if things go well they're they're saying the manager's getting the best out of me it's just i don't know i feel everybody's professional you should be able to adapt with what you're given of course when you're given baba ramen barkley drink water that's a different story that's probably why conte was furious and ended up leaving in the end or not performing but <laughs> but yeah i think it should it should work both ways just just going forward because obviously now when we spoke about this um not on an episode but we did on our youtube so if you haven't checked that out search from the shed and make sure you subscribe to the youtube channel but um, we haven't spoke about it on the podcast itself around um, what it means now for the rest of this season because obviously we're not going to win the Premier League. It'd be it would be it would have to take City to throw every game, do a granite jack or pick up loads of different yellow cards and start doing match fixing or whoever whoever the Arsenal player is allegedly. Um, we've got to reevaluate. We've got to look at where we are now. We've got to think about um, top four. We've got to think about the cups that we're in as well. So where do you see our objectives shifting to in terms of the rest of this season now? I think to please the fans, top four FA Cup trophy or a League Cup trophy and a respectable Champions League run. And I think that'll be more than pleasing for the fans. Yeah, I, I can't I can't fault that at all. You know, I think if we can come away with as many trophies as possible. For me, the Club World Cup is the big one. Club World Cup too, sorry. Yeah, that one I as think, well. I think if we can get the Club World Cup, then 100%, you know, I want to I wanna be walking away this season with that because it's not a good season. But in terms of the board, I think they take that. I think they take the Club World Cup, the Super Cup, off the back of the Champions League, maybe the League Cup as well, maybe even the FA Cup. I think the board would definitely heavily back to call in the uh in the summer but do you feel and this is my final question before we wrap up but do you feel if we we do miss out on top four we don't walk away with any of these trophies that we've just mentioned don't say it don't say I'm, it I'm, I'm just gonna ask i'm paying devil's advocate here but it, it is it's two calls job no. in doubt in terms of being at chelsea because i i personally don't think it should be i think we like i just said we've got a back in regardless but do you think based off previous records of Chelsea managers, you know, Gus Hedding. I could list them all, Gus Hedding, you know, Di Matteo, Frank Lampard. We could go on and on, but the history tells you you're on borrowed time as Chelsea. Do you think he's, he's in hot water if he doesn't win anything? I mean, when you're Chelsea manager and you sign that contract to become Chelsea manager, regardless of if you just won a Champions League or if you're fighting for top four, your, your job's never 100% safe. Hmm. Because all you need is a you know conflict with the board, like it happened with with Conte, and next thing you know, you're gone, or you you're, you're, you won't perform maybe to the level you were performing the previous season. Mm. But I think what we have to do, and this is what the club needs to do, is change this mentality of just firing managers left, right, and centre, and back one manager for a good amount of time. Because for me, I've never seen a manager like Tuchel that seems so happy in the role, so content, so having this chemistry of the fans and at the time the players mm-hmm. it just feels the, like the perfect fit and when all you've got to see is just how, he, how often he wears the Chelsea tracksuit it's like it's, <laughs> he's in love with the club <laughs> I sent I sent you a picture of my dad's friend who owns a restaurant in Wimbledon yeah, yeah. and Tuchel was in there I think when they're not even a midweek you know dinner and he was wearing his full Chelsea tracksuit like when he, when I think the, when was the last time you saw Tuchel not in a I think it was probably Champions League final yes it was I, was Champ, yeah. then. I think then and uh and maybe um, the award. I was trying to think of choice at the awards. Yeah, maybe. But yeah, and then I can't remember. Uh, maybe yeah. underneath is whatever he was wearing. Yeah, <laughs> but no, it's it's we just can't go in this manager merry-go-round anymore. We need to back one manager, and we've got a proven manager in Tuchel, who I think when they, these problems do arise, like we're currently having now, I think he's got a solution to these problems. And we as fans as well, those on Twitter talking about wanting him sack aren't Chelsea fans, in my opinion. They're probably pe- guys who have that Chelsea profile picture, who live abroad, who only watch <laughs> Chelsea maybe a handful of times. Yeah, yeah. You know, since the Hazard days or whatever. But but no, we have to back him, and I don't even want to think about the possibility of him, his name being linked to, you know, his his name potentially being linked to the elsewhere. losing his job elsewhere or losing his job. Yeah. Yeah, no, I'd have to agree. And I think we've got to remember if we sack him, who's coming in? Because we're we're running out of top managers to use now, and and that's not. 
I don't say that sort of as banter. I'm, we we literally are running out of managers. We're having John to, Terry. <laughs> yeah, no, we literally ran out of top. When I say top managers, I mean yeah, like the Ancelotti's and you know we've used Rafa. Rafa's just been sat to we get him back. We've got a we've got a backup manager for, for you know for a period of time. Let him see. I think he's got a four three or four year four year contract. I'm not saying four years, but we've got to at least give him you know, the time that Pep's had, the time that Klopp's had. Exactly, to, to, exactly. To build something at the club and back him. I think that's... Liverpool, Liverpool should be an example here. Yeah. Liverpool weren't performing particularly well in Klopp's first two seasons, but yeah. look how they backed him with the players he wanted, the likes of Jota, Mane, yeah. um, Van Dijk. They're now linked to Bowen and look at yeah. the level as they've reached now. They're probably a team that should be fighting for the title every season and yeah. they've, got, they've got a chance to win silverware every season as well. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Last, I want to ask you, review out of 10 for the season now, so far. Out of 10? Out of 10. It's, it's So far, I'd say 7. Yeah, I was going to say, say something similar, 6.57, when you, like you just listed before, the trophies and tournaments we're still in. Yeah, and we've won, and I know it's last season, but we've won the Champions League, we've won the Super Cup, we didn't actually start bad, we're not playing bad football, and this is what I said as well, we're not we're not playing rubbish football, what, what we're not doing is taking our chances, and I think that, we're not, you know, we're not, we're not losing 6 or 7 nil, it's a 1 nil or, you know, 2 1. So it's, it's a case of just getting the, the team, the right balance in the team for me. Um, and I think we can still kick on. I think, like I said, if we can get some trophies and make sure we get top four, it's not the ideal. It's not what I wanted at the start of the season, but I'll, I'll take it. The way that things have gone this season, COVID injuries, um, you know, our attacker not scoring, I'll take it 100%. Agree. Yeah. And getting top four should be a priority, especially if we want to back two core and attract that top oh, it talent. Should be, it should be a must. It should be a must. Yeah. It's, it's I test. You take it over winning an FA Cup or a League Cup any day of the week. It means more financially mm. and it sets us up for next season. I know obviously you get you can get into your well, via the cups, but you know, you, you wanna be you wanna be in that top four. You wanna hear the Champions League music on a Tuesday and Wednesday night and not having to listen to um Steve McManaman on the <laughs> Thursday night. So you know, kind of sums up how I feel about it. But it's still a lot to play for. I think we've got to be, you know, we've got to be confident. We've got to go into this now. We're getting, obviously, Reese James is back in very light training, which, whatever that means, maybe a bit of light running. Um, obviously, Chilwell's out. There's Dembele potentially coming in. We've got Spurs at the weekend. Just before we go, I want to quickly get your prediction. We haven't yeah. really about it, but let, let's give predictions. Is there a point really reviewing, going for a preview? Because we've previewed it pre before in the Cup and it's only been a a week or two um but prediction perfect game to bounce back you're taking I points agree. off one of your rivals they would have played a day after us in um a cup against leicester mm. yeah they won but you know it was very squeaky oh, bum oh, time did, as you did, say did, did they win i don't think they deserve to yeah you know, <laughs> spurs fans will say will say the opposite but um we'll give them a trophy for being yeah. leicester in they're Southern still time. yeah exactly <laughs> that night in leicester that's what they'll yeah. say yeah. they um they still don't have son i think if we perform like I always say, like in that back at back half of the of the first half of the Liverpool game, hmm. we can win, and we we know how to beat Spurs. Two since two calls come, we haven't even conceded it against Spurs. We beat them every time. So um, I'll go with two one Chelsea. I'm going to go for two. I don't normally do this, but I'm going to go for a one nil Chelsea or one one. Yeah, one one. Think, we love that, don't we? Yeah, yeah. This is why I've gone for it. But I think we'll. I think we'll either we'll either score really early and we'll defend, which we can do. We we know we can do that. But I do think we have gaps and something's mm. changed. I don't know. Obviously, we've lost two key players in Chilwell and James, but I think they do have the tendency to score the odd goal, maybe a penalty, something like that. But so I'm going to go one 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 nil. But it's at the bridge. I'm confident. I'd, if it was at um, you know it was away, then I, I think I'd be a bit more. Oh, I'm not sure, but it's at the bridge. Crowd's going to be electric. Can't complain at all. Good record against Spurs at the bridge as well. Precisely, and Conte will be a statue like he was in the cup final uh, in the Carabao <laughs> Cup because he didn't move. He didn't. He didn't do didn't. anything. Was behind the dugout. Didn't, he hardly moved. Hardly flinched. Just kept kind of trying to rally his players, but he looked like he looked like he couldn't do anything about it. Yeah, shell shots. Yeah, shell shots. But. This has been good. I enjoyed this one. It's episode 50. I thought it was going to be a lot worse than it was. So I'm happy that it's come out the way it did. Seven um, out of 10. 
It could be worse. Seven out of ten. I could have gave a three for some of those matches, <laughs> to be fair. But um, we'll we'll do an end of year. I'm sure we'll be back as well for fifty one. But Theo, as always, thank you very much for joining me. Um, I know it takes you takes your time out your friday nice. to do this sometimes it's good sometimes it's bad but this one's been okay um anyone on apple or spotify make sure you search for us and subscribe on youtube um from the shed end you find us on there give us a like comment as well let us know your thoughts and if you're watching on youtube make sure you hit us up on spotify and apple again get the notifications going so you don't miss any episodes as well but this has been episode 50 it's a bit of a milestone for us um started in april i think didn't we last year so yeah it's been it's been it's been some ups and downs um yeah, from the journey for, for those who have listened to every episode probably sick and tired of the sound of our voices now <laughs> we're not getting we're not going anywhere so you better be <laughs> um but this has been episode 50 for you thanks for joining me cheers everyone else thank you for listening until next time from the shed end we're out